Who says that metal isn't mainstream? Man, millions of people are constantly jamming out to metal and loving it, and they don't even know it. Critically acclaimed mainstream products quite often have so much metal in them that it's crazy to think people will then turn around and be like, Metal sucks balls, bro. It's just noise, man. You check out this new banger by Future. Hermes ash for the dark, my ash. Bitch, so pretty little better than Cassie. And of course, the Metal Gear series has always had a beautiful soundtrack with many different inspirations. But easily the most metal soundtrack in the entire series has to be from Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, and rightfully so, because the game itself and its aesthetic alone is more metal than the entire contrived and boring genre of deathcore combined. And this direction in sound is basically an absolute 180 from any previous Metal Gear game. For those who've never played Metal Gear, the game focuses on getting to your goal by using stealth tactics and incredibly extra long feature length cutscenes as opposed to the blasting and killing that games like God of War or Call of Duty typically ask of you. But in Metal Gear Rising, you are actually a badass cyborg ninja who goes around slicing up other cyborg ninjas to absolute shreds. And you use this high frequency blade that vibrates so fast that it can cut through any object any material imaginable. And when you're done slicing them to shreds, you reach into their diced up innards and snatch their fucking spines out to absorb it into your body for extra power. And if that is not fucking metal, I don't know what is. And of course, you can't have pansy ass soft on the ears music to accompany you through this absolute madness. No, no way. You need some high paced, chunky thrash and industrial riffs complete with sweet picking Dragon Force level solos that no one could possibly replicate live and even a little hint of goddamn John Bush on vocal. And damn, does this game ever deliver in that aspect. Just check some of this out. That's some banging metal that any fan of any metal genre could absolutely enjoy, hands down. And the synth electronic elements definitely add a lot to the heavy feel instead of making it feel lighter or not as heavy. To compose the soundtrack, the director Kenji Saito wanted to create a different feel than previous Metal Gear games, being that this one was focused more on high paced action than on stealth. And come on, we all know the best music for high paced action is the holy grail of all music, metal. And, and don't lie, every single one of us at some point has created some crazy montage anime styled action in our head to our favorite metal tracks. No, that, that's, just, that's just me. All right, no problem. So in order for Saito to embrace his dream for this game's soundtrack, Platinum Games, the producer of Metal Gear Rising, hired the American film and game composer, Jamie Christofferson, who, Actually, it never really worked on a full metal composition. In Jamie's own words, when I met with Platinum Games, they had the idea to use heavy metal music, 
They throw out a lot of older style heavy metal references like Metallica and other stuff from the 80s and 90s. I took that and suggested a lot of modern electronic elements to go along with it. And the music definitely reflects that late 80s thrash mixed with the industrial sound of the mid 90s. But how does someone with no previous metal experience write such a banging metal score? Jamie further explains, It was definitely a stretch for me. I'd done a few heavy metal pieces here and there, but I'd never done a full score. Early on, I knew I needed help. So I enlisted the help of Logan Mader, the former guitarist for Machine Head. Now he produces heavy metal music. I hired people like him and we co-wrote the songs. We wanted real heavy metal guitar riffs and drums to maintain the authentic vibe. All right, I admit, I heavily dislike Machine Head. I I've tried to get into them many times. So I was surprised when their lead guitarist had such a heavy hand in writing this music. And then I found out that he left the band before the year 2000 and after the year 2000, all their shit is pretty cookie cutter, so. Also, his new band, Once Human, is pretty sick. But he wasn't the only metal musician to feature on here. Anthrax legend John Bush even makes an appearance on this album. And while he doesn't have writing credits, his vocal track, Return to Ashes, definitely reminds me of an electronic version of a lot of the material off of Stomp 442. Slower, heavier, more grungy, more drudgy. And even when guitar isn't present on this album, that thick double kick drum is consistently thumping. And when it mixes with the heavier electronic styles in the music, it's actually pretty damn metal. Check it out. thought Metal Gear could be so metal. And if you've never played this game or taken time to sit down and listen to the soundtrack, I definitely hope that you've changed your mind watching this video. It's one of my favorite game soundtracks of all time because it just goes so damn hard and it fits the game so damn well. Definitely one of my favorite games from the series, one of my favorite games of all time, and this soundtrack fits it perfectly. It's such a banger. And I hope that you go and check it out and the game as well. Thank you so much for watching. Have you played this game before? Have you played Metal Gear before? Let me know down below and let me know some other soundtracks from other films or video games that you want me to dive deep into on this series. I hope you enjoyed this episode and we will see you next time on the heaviest show in the universe. Long live metal. <laughs>